Welcome to Wrong Time Watch. My name is Kevin, and today we're looking at the Seiko Marine Master Professional 1000 meter dive watch. Model number for this is the SBBN027. Uh, nickname for this watch is the Yellowfin Tuna. We've also seen it referred to as the Bumblebee for obvious reasons. The yellow highlight here, the yellow second hand and yellow minute hand. Uh, Seiko reserves yellow for their special model watches, so um, this is probably why you don't see it too often on Seiko watches. This is one of the uh, craziest and coolest watches in my collection. 1000 meter is uh, it's crazy to think about. It's a long distance, deep distance underwater. Typical dive watch is uh, 200 meter water resistance. For example, your Seiko uh, SKX here. Bring it over here for size reference as size reference as well. The diameter of this watch is 42, and the diameter of this watch is 49.1. It's a very large watch, but it wears quite well on wrist. The diameter is the same measurement as the lug to lug, so it wears well on my six and a half inch wrist. It yeah, it is a big watch, but uh, it still wears okay. So this is a DLC coated titanium monoblock case, uh, meaning you're not going to get to the battery from the back of this watch. You need to remove the bezel and the crystal and get to it from the front side. So that's how you achieve the one way you achieve the 1000 meter water resistance. Bezel action is very stiff on this watch. It has the shroud as well, so definitely a serious, uh, serious tool here. You're not going to be bumping this one and uh, messing up your time on here. Your elapsed time that is for your dive. There you go. I think I got it lined up. Looks like it lines up pretty well for Seiko. Uh, and this is a Japanese market watch. You can see the kanji date there and the date wheel. Down at the bottom it says. Japan, oh, let's zoom in some more, there we go, Japan 7C46, that is the movement, this is a quartz movement as you can probably tell from that ticking second hand, this is a uh, resin bezel insert, it's kind of transparent there, you see through that first layer and then the yellow underneath. This has a sapphire crystal. Most of the other tunas from this generation had Hardlex crystals. I had a SBBN039. I sold that back to my buddy uh, Mike, Michael, and um, I have a few videos of that one as well, but that had a Hardlex crystal. And then my uh, new tuna, the new model tuna, has a sapphire crystal. So I prefer sapphire crystal, of course. But the hard likes had a nice dome to it, so it was a cool feature as well. All right, let's take a look at the back here. So gas divers, 1,000 meter. Then there it says uh, stainless steel plus ceramic plus titanium. And then Marine Master. So yeah, very cool watch. So as I mentioned, the case here is titanium, the shroud is ceramic, and perhaps the crown is stainless steel. I have to imagine the screw heads are stainless steel for sure. I was actually looking at this the other day, and I felt the crown here, and I thought I was afraid that I scratched it, <laughs> and I looked at it, and uh, oh, it's a, it's a signed crown. It has the, the PS there, that's for uh, Seiko Pro Specs. You know, it should be on, no, I guess it's not on the dial either, I thought it was. Typically that X is on the dial as well. It's not an X, it's a P and an S. But it looks like an X. The premium silicone strap here and uh, has a metal keeper. So let me zoom back out. It's fun to, well, really not much to look at the dial here. They are not applied into these. Those are printed on. Everything on here is printed. But again, it's a serious tool watch. Uh, price for this watch I've seen anywhere from 
1,900 to 2,100 US dollars is new. So it's not a watch you're going to see uh, very often uh, out in the real world, I guess you can say, besides the watch nut world. It is quite thick, but again, 1,000 meter water resistance. So as I mentioned, it has a 7C46 quartz movement, which is accurate to plus or minus 15 seconds per month. It has Lumabrite Loom. Uh, day and date, obviously, we already saw that. Uh, this watch looks like it came out in about 2015. And it is anti-magnetic as well. See, I'm not sure how you would get the battery changed on this. I don't think you can just go to your local mall and uh, get it changed if you have a local mall anymore. So I've worn this watch around a little bit, uh, but not too often. All right, let's go over the dimensions. As I mentioned, uh, diameter 49.1, and that's the same as the lug to lug. Lug to lug is, well, it's, Lug to lug is technically smaller, but the case overhangs the lug, so I just use the uh, case diameter measurement. Hopefully you can see that here. I know some folks like to put uh, metal bracelets on these because it has this straight end link and it would hide under the case, so it gives it kind of an integrated bracelet look, but um, I don't know what kind of bracelet you'd put on here. Maybe a black mesh or another kind of black bracelet, but it's not going to match the ceramic bezel very well. It's funny, it's, it's shiny, but it's black, so it's kind of a weird, shiny appearance. Not something that you would usually see. So anyway, we talked about the lugs. 16.1 millimeter case thickness. Yep, it is a thick watch. But understandable for a thousand meter water resistance. I'm trying to think, what is the Rolex uh, Sea Dweller? Is that 1,000? or Rolex Deep Sea. It's either 1,000 or 4,000 meters. I can't remember, but anyway. Definitely a serious dive watch. Uh, my SKX here is about 13, 13 and a half millimeter thick. And lug width is 22. And uh, the strap does blossom out a little bit, so the strap's about 24, but the lug width really is 22. And then crown size on this, large crown at 7.9 millimeter. And the weight uh, is only 118 grams. For a watch this size, it's pretty impressive. Uh, we're in the Submariner today. This watch weighs 148 grams, size for my six and a half inch wrist. So this watch, this 1,000 meter depth rated versus 300 for the Submariner. And it's a lighter watch and it's a larger watch so a nice contrast there so let me get this on wrist we'll take some mariner off wrist as you know so i'll show these side by side real quick i have uh, quite a variety of watches in my collection so mariner almost looks almost looks larger i think that's the beauty of the black surround here the black ceramic bezel it doesn't look as big as what it is at least this way maybe when i put it on wrist it'll look larger so yeah anyway let's set the submariner off to the side over here i'll we'll put the yellow fin or bumblebee on wrist it's showing up showing off fingerprints like crazy All right, let's get this on wrist. If you guys don't have a tuna, I recommend to trying one out. Now, maybe not this one here, but I think the current model tuna new is 800 bucks. I don't know. I bought mine used, and I don't even remember how much I bought mine for. Actually, maybe they're a thousand. I don't know. But here we go on my six and a half inch wrist with the SBBN zero two seven. I will try and leave a link to a website in Japan where you can buy this from new if you're interested. So 
So yeah, it is a, definitely a large watch, but again, with those short lugs, it's not too bad. You see the lugs on this are shorter than the lugs on the Samariner I just had here for a minute ago. All right, let's zoom out. Yeah, it's a chunky watch. Um, depending on what kind of shirt you have, it may or may not fit under your cuff, but that's you know not really what this is meant for. Let me know what you guys think of this watch. Uh, in general, I don't really own that many black coated watches. In fact, I'm pretty sure this is my only black um, metal watch. My other my other black watches are uh, you know plastic Casio G Shocks, those those type of things. All right, so I think it's time to check out the womb. Usually I use my SKX to compare to. Actually, you know, I think I'll still throw in the SKX, but I'll also throw in the Submariner. So it'll be an interesting uh, contrast here. So I'll be right back with the loom shot. Well, there we have it. Um, Submariner 124060 on the left. SBBN 027 in the middle, and then SKX 009 on the right. Uh, Seiko Tuna Loom is no joke. It's usually the best loom I have on uh, any watches. It's, I can't recall any other watch I've had that has better loom than the Seiko Tuna, any Seiko Tuna. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Hopefully you're subscribed. If not, please hit that subscribe button like the video, and leave a comment below. As always, thank you for taking the time, and thank you for watching.